forget my cow. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Healthy with Heartland podcast. My name's Justin. I'm your host. Also joined with your favorite creative directors, Simon and Shannon. Hey, how we doing today? Love and life. Good. Thanks it's for having another us. Another wonderful day at Heartland. Yes, we've got a great topic today. It's all about the Heartland Foodie Group. We're going to be highlighting our customers, the beautiful things that they post in there, all these fine culinary creations. Oh, yes. Before we get to that, let's get to some announcements. Awesome. Welcome back, Heartland family. Thanks again for tuning in. If you're not already, make sure you go ahead and follow us on Facebook. Make sure you're checking us out on Instagram and that you follow us on YouTube so you can see all of our amazing recipes, tricks, tips, and videos that we post weekly. If you're a Heartland customer, you can restock from home without the hassle. So there's only a couple days left to take advantage of that July reorder special. You can get a summer grilling pack, your choice of burgers, pork cutlets, and chicken cutlets. So that will be amazing. Make sure to take advantage of that over the next couple days. We'll have another great reorder special for you in August. And with that, uh, let's get into the podcast. Yes. I'm excited to see all this food. Try not to get really hungry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's hard. It's really hard. Oh, and we just announced right before the podcast. Yes. You may have seen the post, but if you didn't, we're doing a race to 5000 for the foodie group. Yep. Somebody's going to win $2,000 worth of free food. Oh, yeah. All you have to do is invite five people to the foodie group. And in the comments in that post, it's pinned to the top in the announcements. You just have to comment, I invited my five. Yep. That's all you got to do. That's it. So we're going to get to 5,000 members, and you're going to get some awesome giveaways. That's right. One lucky winner. So invite as many people as you can, but start at five. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Five's the min right. requirement. Right. <laughs> the faster we reach 5K, the faster we do the giveaway, right? That's, That's right. And then we'll do it again to 10,000. That's right. Awesome. Maybe, maybe it'd be $4,000 of food that time. Mm. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be a bomb-dropping episode. Definitely. I'm just going to drop bombs left and right. Just looking at food. I love food, so <laughs> I drop bombs for it all the time. Just dopamine hit after dopamine hit. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want to, you know, invite people to the foodies group, right? I feel yeah. like there's a lot of foodies groups out there, but a lot of them are dedicated to, you know, like restaurant food and like eating, you know, out. eating out and yeah. those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Where this is kind of like the perfect blend, almost like our service, like of health and good food, food, right? Yeah. Like you get both with this where it's not like you have to go out and oh go you go to this restaurant. Yeah. It's literally your own recipe. It's posting it up and it's it's healthy, right? Yeah, it's at home. And what I've learned home is cooking. cooking at home can look at, like it looks like the things take, taste delicious. I'm like, wow, oh, but the okay. creations that everyone comes up with are just fantastic. Yeah. So, yes, just Absolutely because it's wonderful. good for you doesn't mean it can't taste good too. That's like, right. I like the blend we have going. <laughs> it's recipes, but it's also good content, knowledge, Correct. all kinds of shared value. Yep. Yep. Because yep. again, you're on those other foodie groups, you're recommending a restaurant, right? And and maybe, you know, not a lot of people know, but like we always talk on this podcast, the chefs, like where they're getting the sourcing of their meats and those like the food that they're cooking, oh, yeah. like is very important. Same thing with us, right? So we have a lot of content in there derived of and, and you know, out there for sourcing again recipes all those kind of things so i think it's uh, it's a beautiful community like what's what's awesome too is like if cooking is your thing right or like if you happen to be really gifted with it like there are th certain things that you cannot find like at the grocery store and there might be certain dishes that you want to make or you know whatever and those products are hard to find but we can not only get them for you but if you needed something custom and i think we'll bring up some of the photos that we talked about today but yeah just huge pieces of meat things that you can't normally find it's just going to take, I think we've said it before, your your cooking game, is you're just going to level up. It's going to take you a level Absolutely. higher. And you're the inspiration. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. And even if you're, you, d you don't know what to cook or you're not cooking frequently, like Justin mentioned, there's tons of recipes, there's kitchen tips, tricks, people are posting their favorite products, their recommendations. So it's a great tool to use, you know, not only if you're a customer, but it, maybe if you're considering becoming a customer or if you just need help in the kitchen in general. So it, I think it's a, it's a great community for all people to join. And one tip to use the group, a lot of people planning for their reorders will be going through the product list and they won't know what something is, mm -hmm. you know, like cool ad, or if you see something or maybe you're not sure how to incorporate something, you can go into the search bar in the group and just type anything in there mm -hmm. and you'll probably find something that will inspire whatever you're trying to do or teach you something about what the cut is or how to use it. Yep. So yeah, definitely use that, that search function um, to help you with whatever you're trying to do. And one of the great it's things I, I saw as well is, 
the customers are using it as like they're asking questions and other customers are, are filling them in and being like, yeah. hey, this is what I get on my reorder. Mm -hmm. Like someone asked, I think the other day, like, hey, I'm about to do my reorder. What are the must haves that everybody's getting? And they just went out and just started naming, you know, a bunch of my favorite things. And I was like, what's better? I mean, that what's better value than, you know what I mean? Getting all that right there from another customer that is getting, you know what I mean? Those things that you're looking for. Or yeah. in introducing you to something. And then if you don't know what to cook with it, they probably got a recipe on there, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yep. Awesome. Should we get into this? I Let's think do it. so. All right. All right. First one. Do we have it up? Yes, we do. Okay. So my favorite thing about this one is just how perfectly evenly cooked it is. Mm. <laughs> right? I don't know if you noticed that. Yes. I mean, it looks like it's a coulette, but I was surprised that it was seared in a cast iron pan because to me it almost looked like it was sous vide because it was so right. perfect throughout the entire thing. Mm. And again, this is a post from Jennifer Caustic. So I've seen a bunch of her recipes and she does a really great job of getting really into detail about the ingredients that she's using and the techniques mm. that she's using and things like that. So wow. she's got a pampered chef group. As I well, believe right? so, yeah. yeah. I think she said that she was using her cast iron pampered chef uh, pan mm -hmm. to make this, and uh, it looks like a garlic and herb rub. So, And I love the pairing. Stuff. You know what I mean? It looks like a little like mozzarella cheese, tomato, mm -hmm. like a little balsamic. Oh, yeah. I love it. It's got some basil on top. Oh, yeah. Looking good. Yeah, we're going to get hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think my stomach just growled. I hope the mic didn't pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely delicious. To the next one? Yeah, let's go on to the next one. Ooh, I think I remember this Ooh. one. This was, uh, oh, who posted give me, this Give me one? your best guess. It was Will Berry. It was Will Berry. Hey, yeah. Good job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think looks, uh, looks just delicious. a nice balance of just nutrient-dense food right here. Nice. I've been seeing a lot of uh, recommendations of burgers for breakfast. Like, I know you had the one sandwich that was on there that oh I, yeah, I thought, it, for some reason, I guess oh. I thought it was sausage, but you told me it was a burger. Oh. And then I think I've seen a couple other ones in the foodie group, and so I'm like, oh, maybe I need to start doing that. But Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> that sounds pretty that good. That breakfast sandwich was like, Psh. and then yeah. this is like, essentially the breakfast sandwich in a bowl. Yeah, yeah. and he put spinach, mushrooms, pico de gallo. It's almost like a omelet but like with a burger right. like kind of broken down oh, yeah. i really like it yep <sighs> and he's using all good quality ingredients the local eggs from shannon teague's farm in percelville mm. nice. where i get my eggs from too all right and of course the creek stone oh yeah man so good. gotta have the creek stone i mean any combination of beef and eggs yeah just sign me up right oh, yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah. absolutely and it's i mean again i know we, we rant and rave about this but the presentation yeah. Like the Heartland Foodies, like that's their number one thing. The presentation of all this, like you just saw the last one and now this one, it's just like, I don't it's know if you can get that. Beautiful glaze. Right. It's insane. Yeah. It's wonderful. All right. Next one. Oh, I know what this one is because I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I see how you threw me a curveball here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A couple requests for the, the searing grape, which is on our new platinum grill. And yeah. I've been experimenting with it. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome tool. You know, if you have something marinated and you want to keep the marinade mm -hmm. there so it'll kind of cook on a grill, but in its juices, you can use that cast iron searing grate. Mm -hmm. And I did find a couple inserts on Amazon that you can throw into any grill. So, um, yeah, if you want to add a little upgrade piece to your grill, you can pull that in and out and, you know, take the stainless steel grate out throw that in. Yeah. It's easy cleanup, too. It pops right out, throw it in the sink and clean it, throw it back in the grill. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Wow. It looks really good. And what kind of rice did you pair it with? So... Basmati rice is always what I use, mm -hmm. um, just because it's the healthiest. You know, India. It's got to come from India, though. Mm. That's the most nutrient dense soil left in the world. Um, soil degradation is a big problem. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So basmati, I did a little uh, shoyu on there. So um, just kind of cooked it up with some, uh, you know, a little bit of soy sauce, and then I did barbecue marinade or Korean barbecue marinade mm. on the fajita strip. So that's what that is. Oh Love my it. goodness. Twelve eighty four in your product list. Looks delicious. Yes, that that's is. I mean, that's what that's all you need right there, right? The meat, the yep. I would say the potatoes, but this is in this case rice, right? <laughs> yep. It's all you yep. need. Yep. It's delicious. And you said the shoyu gives it like a nice little kind of sweetness too to kind of turn it up. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love Korean barbecue. And oh, anything so cooked good. in a cast iron, like especially with steak, you get that in really nice like caramelization. That's what it looks like you got on there, yep. and that's really good with like any marinade. So mm -hmm. that looks yeah. awesome. I did slightly overcook it, and. I almost didn't post it because of that. <laughs> but then it's like, you know what? No one's perfect. It exactly. is what it is. It's still go. good. Yes. 
It's all going in the same place. Oh, I threw this one in there. This is just because I thought it looked so beautiful. I had to put it in there. It's a freezer photo stocked by our amazing and wonderful delivery team, which we always talk about how awesome they are at stocking the freezer, organizing everything, letting you know where everything's going to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had to throw that one in there because it just looks so nice. <laughs> yep. And this is one of our older models. Yeah. It's actually, this is the one I have. Oh, nice. Yep. So jealous for everybody who's getting the new stainless steel. Yeah, beautiful. Right. Yeah, you get glass shelving. Eh, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, the organization. I mean, that's one thing I love about our packaging. Yeah. It's designed to perfectly stack in these freezers. Yep. Exactly. You Super know where neat. everything is. The convenience. That's what it's all about. Ooh. Ooh, see, this one was cool. All right. So this one is by Jessica Cottett. And it looks like she was doing baked tilapia and whatever sort of panko seasoning crust that she's got going on here oh looks yeah. fantastic. You know that lemon, I mean, citrus goes really, really well with seafood just in general. But she did a panko garlic uh, breadcrumb with Parmesan and then finished it off with the lemon. Mm. Yeah. It's yeah, good stuff. That looks money. <laughs> okay, I'm just getting hungry. Oh, and, and the hungry. best part is that she said it, w- it went from her freezer to her table in 45 minutes or less. Yep. So great job, Jessica. Yep. Nice work. Looks awesome. Oh, man. Oh, I remember seeing this one when it was first posted. So I'm going to assume that that is pork shoulder. Um, I think it's, sm- well, it says Heartland smoked pork roast. So I think you're right. I think it was a pork shoulder and then ribs. So they did the double dip, the ribs and the pork shoulder. You can't do that enough. Yeah. yeah I mean. <laughs> it looks so good. And then you got the classic sides. So they looks like they got some sort of slaw or some salad and then mm-hmm. potatoes and baked beans. I mean, it yeah. really doesn't get much better than that. It's a good yeah. Sunday right there. Exactly. Jeez. <laughs> Tis the season. I mean, and I wonder how they cooked it, too. Uh, I'm not sure. She didn't describe in the post, but I know they looked fall apart. So whatever method you used, I'm sure it was perfect, but I, I'm always interested. Did you do the smoker? Did you kind of steam it in the oven? What's the uh And who, who the made this one? Uh, this one's Nella D. Waldron. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it looks like it has that smoke ring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A little crust on the outside. So oh, yeah. either way, if that wasn't in the smoker, yeah. teach us your wizardous ways. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> teach us your ways. <laughs> right. Awesome. Okay. Here's another one. Oh, uh, definitely Zach. Yep, I know. I wish Zach was here. <laughs> you could talk about it. I the custom cut, man. There you go. Yes. Yeah, he had a little bit of alligator. Um, I think he said some farmer's market squash. And then I think those are the Thousand Hills hot dogs. So mm. those are the all yep. beef. So good. Uncured hot dogs. Those mm, delicious. Yeah. It's guilt-free <laughs> cased meat right there. <laughs> yeah. He's all about the alligator. That's what yeah. I was going to say. I, I've seen him. He's done it before couple a couple of times. Of times yeah. And it looks like he's got like a Cajun kind of dry rub going on there. So that was in honor of National Hot Dog Day just a couple <laughs> days ago. Got to add the gator. <laughs> Beautifully done. Nice. Oh. Ooh. All right. So this one's Rachel Aluzzi. I remember this one. She just did a simple chicken salad. And then I love the tagline. It's kind of what stuck with me. Heartland chicken. It's what's for dinner. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna have to write that down. Yeah, it's, it's good very stuff. refreshing. Looks yeah. like it was probably grilled. Looks, yeah, yeah it's it got looks the like grill it's marks got those on nice there. Grill yeah. marks, so mm-hmm. either like an indoor electric grill or maybe an outdoor propane grill. Not sure. Oh. I know they're they're really into the uh, the fine cooking smokers grills. They, oh got, yeah. they got every gadget over there. Oh and yeah. they won actually. I believe she won the grand prize of the Hungry with Heartland Challenge. So they got the sous vide. The sous vide so to add to it. It's yeah. like you got all the different levels. That's right. That's awesome. Yeah, Maybe they, it was uh, sous vide and then grilled just for the marks. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> yeah. Sh- shout out again. Thanks for the uh, the bagels. They were they were phenomenal. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, they brought down some authentic New York bagels. Oh, oh. I can't imagine. So good. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Ooh, this is like a it's like some sort of gumbo-ish maybe okay so this is by nicole santos Mm -hmm. and it she said it's for all of my caribbean folk out there and i believe she was doing an oxtail sort of stew Mm. that's what i believe that's what it looks like so sign me up it looks pretty good it looks hearty it looks delicious i mean the sauce is probably that kind of cajun creole kind of that's a big old sofrito ricaito kind of that's a big pot that she's cooking it in so whatever it like she that. made it looks like you got a bunch of leftovers maybe yep. maybe you're willing to share with us yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta explore with the oxtails more yeah there's I've, so many yeah. things you can do with that so, so many i've heard and there's so many recipes for it i just i never personally have cooked them yeah especially myself, like because oxtails i mean if you 
low and slow. You know what I mean? They, they kind of fall off the bone. But yeah. I know people add like a little bit of like vinegar and like a little bit of uh, sugar and cu- to kind of like sweeten it up. But mm. oh, it's so good. Onion, it's fire. That's how they make the the broth for pho. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yep. Same slow kind of cooked. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. Oh yeah. Ooh. I'm gonna just. Oh, it says skirt steak. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna guess, but yeah. you would have got it right. Who gave yeah. us this one? So this is Lindsay Johnson. This is a uh, skirt steak, basmati rice, and mixed vegetables, all from Heartland Foods. So this was an entire meal from Heartland. So she got her basmati rice, mixed vegetables, which got the green beans, corn, carrots, peas, mm. and then she has the delicious skirt steak, which also looks like it was cooked pretty perfectly as well. Mm. I just love the fibrous cuts. Like oh, you can so see tender. the fibers in mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Just grabs marinade. So much flavor. Yeah. Same with the bavettes. They're just like that. And Justin, you have a usually like a recipe that you do for skirt steaks. How long do you usually cook a skirt steak? Man, depends. I mean, I basically, I mean, for steaks in general, mm-hmm. I'm just getting the grill as hot as it'll get. Mm-hmm. 500 plus, and you're just going to sear each side for 30 to 45 seconds. So you're going to get that caramelization, a mm. little bit of like crust, yeah. charcoal-ish, mm-hmm. but a nice medium rare in the middle. And if you're going to cook it that way, it's going to be pretty raw in the middle. So you really got to let it rest for a good five minutes so mm-hmm. that it'll look like that yeah. when, when it you redistributes it. the heat and kind of cooks itself through. Right. Wow. Yeah. And you could tell that it's juicy just from looking at the picture. Oh, yeah. yeah. And what's probably awesome is that it was probably in, you know, 30, 40 minutes that this was all prepared and... Ready to go. All right. Healthy meals on the table. <laughs> While we're on that topic, this is something that comes up all the time. Mm-hmm. I just want to talk about the blood, you know. Oh, people, yeah. People who are, want their meats cooked more well done because of the blood. Right. When they harvest an animal, they drain every ounce of blood. There is no blood left in the animal. So when you eat medium rare red meat and you see that juice come out, it's actually just a red protein juice called myoglobin. And bacteria doesn't permeate red meat. So whether you cook it all the way through or you sear it on the outside, the safety is the same. So mm, right. if you're a little paranoid, want things more well done. Now, look, if it's a texture thing or whatever the reason is, I'm not saying you have to eat it medium rare, but right. hopefully that'll give you some confidence to at least go towards the medium side of things. Yeah. yeah. I think that was one thing for me. I, I know I used to eat, you know, super well done stuff. But then as I got into, you know, the sourcing and finding out that that was a huge, you know, proponent of it like you know of eating that type of meat and how you know you talk about all the things like bacteria and there's a lot of misconceptions that come along with you know food in general but then as I started researching sourcing and you know I mean being here at Heartland and finding out you know Creekstone and like their practices and all that kind of stuff it's like now I love eating even rare steak you know what I mean like now uh, I mean I'm not going to say chicken either but as as well like you know chicken pork those kind of things like it doesn't have to be cooked all the way, well, either I'm way. Not, like it's yeah, I feel like we're not as worried about like, oh, okay. Like I'm not temping my chicken, right? Because I'm not, I'm not trying to like cook it until it's like dried out because right. I'm worried about something like that That's happening. What I was trying, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'll, so eat, I'll eat undercooked chicken all day as long yeah. as it's Murray's because I know it's safe. I know it's been vacuum sealed. Exactly. Yeah. It, it hasn't been in a fresh supply chain growing bacteria. There, right. There's no margin for error. It's, yeah. it, there's no risk. Yeah, exactly. And I love, I love that assurance. You know, because before when you think about it, you're like, oh, I don't, uh, you know, I don't want to eat that because it, I could get sick or, uh, you know, what I mean, you go to restaurants and people have these things and, and maybe they're cooking practices. We don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? But at the end of it, the sourcing is what matters. Yep. Yeah. So Definitely. visibility, full supply chain. That's right. Ooh. Ooh, jerk chicken. This yes. one looks awesome. The peach mm-hmm. sauce on top. Yeah. yeah. So this is Lori Steinbaugh. This is Lori Steinbaugh. She said it's a grilled jerk chicken breast with homemade peach salsa, mm. basmati rice, and then corn off the cob. Nice. Looks really good. Yeah. Scallions on the side. Love scallions. Yeah. I heard a lot about like, you know, mango salsa. I've never had a peach salsa, but I'm sure it's really, really good too. Oh, it's the season. Think about it. Georgia it's peach. It's like a sweet and mm. tangy. You get that kind of vinegar and like the sweetness from the fruit. This is kind of off topic, but kind of on topic, right? Have you ever had a peach that was like so juicy, like when you bite into it, it just like literally like all the juice is just literally, it's like going everywhere. Yeah. Uh, we had some the other week. Well, those were nectarines, but yeah, similar. <laughs> similar. I'm talking about the peaches. Oh, okay. Okay. The we had peaches too, but yeah. You get your peaches out in Georgia? 
Well, they come up from they a were farmer's from market. Georgia. Yeah. I think they were Sorry, from Georgia. I just had a song in my head. That's where the best ones. That's where the best ones come from. A lot of them actually come from the Carolinas. Yeah. Um, cause they're, you know, they're not too far, but the same sort of climate, yeah. I think. So that's why know. they're peaches and nectarines always remind me of like the summertime. Oh, I love them. Yeah. They have Especially great, like great right flavor. now when they're in season, just the juices. Oh, and it's even cooler when you can like, she did include it like in the recipe. Absolutely. That's what I think. Yep. It's pretty cool. And if you look at, I mean the presentation again, the color, Oh yeah. right. You got red, pink, yellow, white, green. It just, uh, yeah, I love it. It looks really good. Let so us know in the comments what you guys are thinking too. Yeah. A couple people watching. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. This is a good one. All right. This is Rachel and Lucy. Rachel and Daniel. I don't know who, who, who but they they <laughs> both posted it. And it's a smoked teriyaki flank steak oh. a la Heartland. Oh, yes. It looks really good. So perfectly cooked. Yep. It looks so yeah. good. And look, thin <laughs> slices. Oh, I could just imagine. Wow. <laughs> we got on this next one. Is, okay. that, is that a pork chop? This is Debbie Kale. It is. It's a Cheshire pork chop, but it's like one of those thick cut ones. And you can tell it's just really juicy and tender. And I think she cooked it to like a nice medium, well, medium kind of mm. temperature. And uh, she served it with potatoes, looks like some zucchini and broccoli. So nice, healthy, well-balanced meal. Oh, yeah. Looks like it might be 50-50 squash zucchini. I don't know. Yeah, that could be. I have to ask Debbie. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is another good one. So this is John Griffith. And he did a Heartland Chuck roast in the crock pot with potatoes, onions, and green beans. He said the roast is so tender, pulling it apart was like taking a hot knife through butter. Oh. I love that description. That's a great caption. I mean, you can just tell too. Yeah. The shred. Oh, my goodness. And it's not where you have like those, because I've made a bunch of the roasts. You, like sometimes previously when I used to make them in like the crock pot, you would get like those like fatty pieces or pieces that you'd have to like take out. When I do a roast in like the crock pot, it's like all meat. It all breaks down mm. and it's it's just so good. I don't have to worry about like, you know, a gristly piece or like taking out like the fat. It's, oh, it's so delicious and it has such a great beef flavor. <gasps> yeah. So great. I mean, the chuck is... One of the fattiest parts yep. of the animal. Yeah. So most of that fat in a slow, long cook like that will render down right. and become just part of the flavor. But no matter what, in a chuck roast, you're going to get pockets of gristly fat. It's just, yeah. it's going to be in there a little bit. Yeah. I like it. So yeah, some people like it. Some people love it. Yeah, but you really like it. This is why we have stew tenders. If you want it pre-trimmed, cut, and all the fat gone, order the stew tenders. If you want the traditional chuck, just throw the roast in the crack pot. That's right. <laughs> there you go. I'll eat, I mean, I'll eat just the fat parts in general. Like when we're eating the ribeyes and there's like, you know, that beautiful like intermuscular fat, fat I just, pff, I'll eat all that. Yep. Even that little, yeah, the, the fat cap, I love it. A little like core yep. of fat in a ribeye. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> has really good flavors from what you yeah. tell me. But then some people, you know, they prefer Something steaks more, more lean yeah. and tender kind of deal. So Maybe the fillet is more own. your deal. Right. Yeah. That's, That's what you. I prefer. <laughs> it's all preference. <laughs> yeah, yep. exactly. You got it. Whatever That's you right. need. Oh, man. Okay, this is another Zach one. Oh. And um, I believe he had, I think it's chicken thighs. Yes, chicken thighs. And then he said he had a porterhouse, which he which was 72 ounces that he vacuum sealed and had a dry brine going. <sighs> and then he also said there was one product that was not Heartland. I think it was the A5 Wagyu ribeye. Yeah. That's the one on the left-hand side. That looks just insane. Yeah. But all of that looks fantastic. Yeah, so he custom oh cut God. a 72 ounce porterhouse. <laughs> that is so ignorantly awesome. <laughs> 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 but you can see on it, because so he dry brined it, which is basically starting dry aging. Mm -hmm. And does it say how long he did it for? Because it, it looks like it was it in there for a while. It definitely looks like it's aged yeah. on the outside. You know, with that oxygen exposure, it starts to, you know, bacterially break down and decompose and just mm -hmm. yeah. deepens the flavor. It's actually a good thing. Oh yeah, he didn't say how long. He just said it was 72 ounces of it. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to guess he had it in there for a week. Wow. Yeah. yeah. We'll, have to, we'll have to ask him. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah it looks wonderful. It looks amazing. Yeah. I'm sure it tasted even better. Yeah. I mean, after all that, I mean, that's the, uh, the, labor, the labor of, of love, love, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The time that it takes to kind of season them and then, you know, brine them and all that kind of stuff. It, oh. Yeah. So I'm guessing that's a tuna steak. Which one? It is. Yeah. Oh. It's got to be. It says salmon and tuna steaks have been our go-to. Mm. What other fish would you suggest for our next order? Mm. Cobia. But that's definitely a tuna steak right there. <laughs> Looks good. Yeah. Oh, yum. Okay, yeah. 
I'm following you. That is Heather Verone. She's the one who posted that. She said salmon, tuna steaks. Yeah, that's their favorite. And then she asked, what other fish do people suggest for her reorder? I wonder what they said. I know, Justin, oh, I you recommended this. the cobia. There was about five comments in a row, cobia. cobia. Oh, yeah, <laughs> cobia is good. Cobia. <laughs> cobia for the win. Yeah. I like cobia being added to my next order. Yeah, and then everyone said cobia. And the mahi-mahi as well was the second mention, an honorary mention. Yeah. Poor salmon. Yeah, I know. Salmon, salmon would have been in there. having a then hard time since just, we got cobia. You know what? Salmon had a great run. Yeah. So <laughs> salmon could chill out for a while. <laughs> let, him, a let him repopulate. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. There That's you go. true. Yeah. But that looks like a, a nice, clean tuna with, like, you know, the peas and the... Yep, you got yeah, the Heartland, gre- the Heartland green meal. peas and then some potatoes. A lot of people have been doing potatoes. I've mm-hmm. been doing potatoes more often just because I've been seeing so many people in the foodie group do them. Mm-hmm. So they're so they're easy. Great. You could just, you know, coat them in uh, olive oil, avocado oil, and just roast them in the oven. They're so delicious. And they're, like, when you reheat them, you can't even, you know, tell that you had already pre-cooked them. That's mm-hmm. why I like them. Yep. Good stuff. Absolutely. What do we got next? This was my first use of the cast iron searing grate. Nice. Okay, so this is the bacon wrapped scallops. Mm. Yep. And then I definitely cooked some other stuff in the bacon fat afterwards. Oh, yeah, you got to do that. (laughs) Just can't waste it. (laughs) These are the True North bacon wrapped scallops, correct? Mm -hmm. And you've done the bacon wrapped shrimp before too, I think. Bacon wrapped shrimp, bacon wrapped scallops. I mean, bacon wrapped anything. You can just sign me up for that. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, so these are actually supposed to be cooked from frozen. Okay. okay. The directions on the label, throw them in the oven. I think it's 400, okay. whatever it is. But um, I decided to thaw them and grill them, and they were phenomenal. So wow. you can improvise. Right. I love scallops, too. And these look like the juicy kind of U10 diver scallops. Sometimes you go to you know different even restaurants and places, that are little small scallops are like, you yeah. know, like this big. You want the like, big what? juicy ones you with want all the flavor. Big, juicy ones like that, yeah, and definitely wrapped with bacon. That looks fire. Yeah, and you want to know where they come from and that they're not stamped yes. shark tails. And you know, There's a lot of counterfeit scallops out there. Right. And these are, you know, wild caught East Coast scallops. That's the craziest thing, yeah. Cutting them out of shark tail. Yeah. I can't even imagine Apparently that. Apparently, you wouldn't know the difference. It's very similar to a scallop. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. Yep. And seafood's the least regulated industry, so there's <laughs> all kinds of counterfeit seafood. That's right. Like, apparently, you think you're buying a certain fish, and it could just be a different fish. Right. Wow. In different packaging. Exactly. Wow. That's scary. Yeah. That is. It is. It definitely is. Because who's, I mean, again, we talked about it before. Who's who's going to regulate them out in the middle of the ocean? Like, how do you? Right. Whose responsibility is this? Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm guessing that's a brisket. Yes. That is a huge brisket. I believe, well, I think this was Elle's picture, and that's why I brought it up. I don't know if this is the brisket or the pastrami because she did like a couple things. She had like a huge brisket that she did. And then I know she did like she turned a brisket into pastrami, mm-hmm. which she said was like a huge success. And that was over in 4th of July. So I think that's the pastrami. But talk about labor of love. She was talking about all the processes that yeah, she had to go like through to get it to that point. And I was like, weeks. OK, yeah, we definitely have to show this because, wow, that's a lot of work. Yeah. 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 It looks amazing. It really sure does. It was wonderful. Yeah. And then you see behind, they have, like, the whole spread. Like, that's the way to do it. You got to have a, you know what I mean, like a cookout with the Heartland goodies and just have a spread to go with it. It's yeah. that's awesome. So this is, I'm going to guess that's a full pack or brisket. I think. I think you're correct. This is Erin Barrett. So she said this was the biggest piece of meat that she had ever cooked, and it came out amazing. So it was 17 hours of cookie to- cooking time at 225. Wrapped it at 165, took it off the Traeger at 200. So she was using the Traeger. Mm. And then she said, thank you, Heartland, to access for such high quality meats because it was perfect for our neighborhood 4th of July potluck. And Erin, it looks amazing. You can see the results (laughs) down below and it looks amazing. So Erin definitely knows what she's doing. So let's talk about briskets for a second because Mm -hmm. it's becoming a very popular thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's smokers just in general becoming popular. This is the hardest thing to cook i think that there is uh, uh, wow. especially when it comes to smoking meats because the brisket is so unforgiving it's mm-hmm. so easy to screw it up right so what she did 165 where she wrapped it that's the zone where brisket hits the stall mm-hmm. where all that oh. gets kind of stuck where all that fat's starting to melt and everything mm. so the technique is when you hit the stall you pull it off and wrap it mm. and that helps it get over the stall into the next part of the cook 
kind of trap in all those juices and everything like that. Yep, yeah. and you spritz it with either you know apple cider vinegar, or right. whatever kind of concoction you want to do, but keep that thing as juicy as possible. Mm. And then wrap it, and then you pull it off around 200, 210. And the key for me is at that point, try to chill and let it rest for two hours. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Let the juices completely firm back up. Your brisket will be amazing. I'll yeah. just throw it in a cooler, like wrap it in a towel, put it in the cooler. Mm-hmm. Two hours later, when you open up that cooler, it'll steam will fly out. It'll be oh my hot and perfect. It's yeah. not going to cool off. It's, yeah. Oh my gosh. That's the way to do it. That's yep. And you're right. Briskets are, are becoming super popular. Yeah. For people to do, especially your home cooked chefs and things like that, like people are, are well, it's summertime. So that's um, it's, it's the like season for barbecue it, barbecue right? and in general briskets. Nothing says that better than right. a brisket. And we were talking <laughs> about the different types of barbecue before that you can have. You know, your Texas, your Kansas City, Memphis, your Carolina. You can give it to yeah. me all. Like give yeah. give me every <laughs> single kind. I don't I don't mind. I love every single kind. I'm not gonna hate on either sort of barbecue that there is, but yeah, super. I mean, the summertime. It's it's the season for it, and I. I that's why I love the summer. And then we're, you know, after the summer, you're going to move into the fall. And, fall you know, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but pretty soon there's going to be some good smoking, stuff. smoking, yeah. I mean, I'll do it, do it all year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's one of my favorite <laughs> things to do. Like, if there's a snowstorm, yeah. that smoker's working. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. like, I can't go anywhere. Yeah. I'm, I mean, that's the time to use the smoker. There right, you go. right. That's yep. true. Yeah, I remember when we had that back to back. It was like, I don't know, a couple feet. This was probably, I don't know, five, six years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't remember when it was, but. Literally, the snowdrifts were taller than the cars. Oh, my God. And I carved out a spot for the smoker <laughs> in the snow, and I kept, like, shoveling around. <laughs> nice. Anyways. Wow. What do we Dedication. Ooh, okay. This is Veronica Gilmore. She did this one. I think she just, her caption was his and hers, which I thought that was awesome. <laughs> that, uh, I'm going to guess on the right is Scottish salmon. Okay. By the way, it's cut. Okay. The left one might be a marinated salmon. Could be true. And now tell me I'm wrong. I don't know. She <laughs> didn't. She didn't claim. So I'm gonna say, you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like she's got a really delicious fresh salad, like arugula and some peppers or tomatoes, and then looks like it's feta. One's got feta yeah. and one does not. But it, oh wow, it looks so good, Veronica. <sighs> Presentation again. I'm just like wow. What a wonderful lunch or dinner. Yep. Huge bowl of food, and that thing's probably all in 300 calories. Yeah. And yep. Very nice concrete countertops as well. Just throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's really neat. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Ooh. All right, so this is Liz Dubish. She posted this photo. So this was two three-and-a-half-pound briskets that I guess went in the smoker, and then they did a beer can chicken, Oh my which God. I've seen, like, some recipes online for that. It's, yeah. pretty, it's pretty interesting and creative. I wonder what the rub is on the outside of that, too. Yeah, it yeah. looks like they both have some sort of seasoning, which I don't think she specified, but I know she said it smelled good, so... I know mm. people are getting into that slap your mama season. I don't know if you heard about that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I haven't heard of it. I've heard of this. Sla- I mean, like I, I, a lot of people are using it for like, you know, like different kind of like barbecue seasoning, marinades and stuff like that. Like it's, oh man, like <laughs> fire. Wow. <laughs> Good enough to, and I'm not going to say it because my mom may be watching and she might get upset. Oh, she she nice. might slap you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for saying it. Um, but actually the, the, re- the reorder special, isn't it the whole yeah, n- next month in August, uh, the reorder special is going to be a whole Murray's Farms uh, broiler chicken with your order. So you could do that absolutely beer can free. Chicken. So yeah, you Does, definitely doesn't come with the beer can though. Yeah, yeah you right. You'll you need to supply, supply that, but you can definitely <laughs> post your photo of it, and we would love to feature it on the podcast or in a future post. Mm-hmm. Justin, so here's a question: You've done beer can chicken. Does the beer matter? What type of beer you use? Are you using a lighter beer, an IPA? Like wh- I don't think it matters. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. I mean, whatever. Do you use the liquid or do you literally just use the can to hold up the chicken? Like, what's no, the actual the technique? Yeah. You do. Yeah. Oh, okay. So th- uh, maybe I need to get, do more research on this. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you need to try it. So then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. Yeah. I'm going to do beer can turkey. Oh. oh. Well, you got to have a pretty big beer can for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> About a 40. An extra beer yeah. Can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What do we got next? Ooh. Okay. This is Dan. Soik, S-O-Y-K-E. I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. But uh, he said that this was from the other night. His wife and uh, him had a family, uh, had a, excuse me, a dinner without their kids. And they did sous vide shrimp and lobster tails. Yum. Um, Both were cooked in crab butter. Whatever that is sounds amazing. Um, After removing them from the sous vide, I finished them off in the hot skillet, served with brown butter and the crab butter juices from the bags. Wow. Wow. So their sous vide... 
wow. And then there's next level sous vide. Yeah. Right. This, this is, is next level. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was checking out like the container with the sous vide. He's got like the racks in there. Like that is an official, official sous vide. Definitely knows what he's doing there. Yeah. I'm not even going to say it. I'm just speechless looking at it. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. And then like, like I'm like, out? okay, so not only the lobster tail, but then the shrimp. <laughs> and then they're both cooked in crab butter. Oh. Wow. Uh-huh. Like, wow. And then it's on the plate there with just like the dipping sauces. I'm like, you don't need anything else. Yeah. That looks amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. That's some restaurant. Yeah, absolutely That's what I mean. amazing. Why go to a restaurant when you have that at home? Yeah, I know, right? All right, so this one is L again. This is L. Ellie, sorry, I keep saying L. It's Ellie. It's (laughs) Ellie. My apologies, Ellie. So this is a brine brisket that has made its way into the smoker, and she cannot wait to enjoy it 15 to 16 hours from now. Mm. So, yeah, I think this is, she did the pastrami, and then she did the brisket, and that's a huge brisket. That's a full packer. That's taking up, like, her almost entire oven. That's right. But I will say, see the other racks? You could do more. You could. You could could do more. Yeah. (laughs) Could have another <laughs> whole one in there. Right under. Yeah, if 12 pounds of brisket isn't enough. <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Oh, no, this is just a, a montage. Oh, okay, okay. This is actually our post. I'm sorry, I had to feature it in there. <laughs> this is cobia. Uh, well, this is what we typically eat on, like, a regular basis. But we our always cook prep. the uh, chicken cutlets. We do, do the cobia. We'll do, like, the burgers. We do the ground turkey, the ground chicken, and sometimes, like, the ground beef and stuff. We've been eating pretty, like, lean lately, but I mean, we love the burgers and the coolette steaks and the ground beef mm-hmm. and the premium steak burgers, the burger blend. Are you just naming the menu? <laughs> I mean, I can't decide. <laughs> like, I just, I just can't decide. I'm just going down everything that I know is in my <laughs> We love them all. <laughs> we love all of it. It's all great. And I'm just using salt and pepper, and it's all it needs. That's really so here, here's what I want to know. So you're on the flat top. Is, yeah. that, is that the Blackstone? Yes. Uh, no, it's a Camp Chef. That's right. Cool. Camp, camp Chef. Chef. Those are getting popular, too. Flat yes. tops. Yes. So seemingly looking at this, it looks like you're cooking for an army, right? <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> but I would assume this is going to be three to four days of meals. Correct. That's normally exactly. Monday through Thursday. Thursday Bre- yeah. That's lunch and dinner because we don't eat breakfast. So... So, well, our breakfast you, is so is that like the routine? You guys cook on Sundays and you cook for the, the week? Yep. yep. Well, we cook up until Thursday. Cook up until Thursday. And then typically like on thir- like on Friday, like that's when I'll, like, I'll actually like make our meal at the time. But and then like the on Saturday, sometimes prepped. we'll kind of treat ourselves. Yeah, like we'll do like the a day where we can kava or we'll have like a chipotle yeah. or like, you know, maybe we'll have an acai bowl or something like that. But yeah. So you're, so you're on a similar schedule as me. It's like yeah. Mon- yeah. Monday through Friday, we eat perfect and yep. then have some fun on the weekend. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Once you're at a, a good place, a good healthy place, that's yeah. a good lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we don't feel like we're missing out on anything. Right. At that point. You know what I mean? Like you're just eating right the entire time. And then on the weekends, if you allow yourself to kind of enjoy something, you don't feel like you're, you're missing anything. Or anything. You're yeah. like, yeah, you're, you're holding back from anything. Cause you're like, I really don't want that other stuff anyway. Like I, I want to have my one treat. And then after that, I'm good. Yeah. Get right back on the, on the. Yeah, I think like prepping it like like just for us, it just makes it so much like easier. Like everything is ready to go, and then like we know what we're having for lunch. Like it's ready, and we don't have to spend time like making it. And then it just makes it like it makes it almost forces us to eat it because it's there, it's ready to Uh, go. Like you know, it just. I think there's and and again, a lot of people probably don't eat leftovers, right? And it's probably because of what they're cooking essentially will dry up. Yeah, it's true. We'll put this in the back in the microwave to just reheat it for oh yeah, two lunch. Days and sometimes later, we'll even eat it cold. It like I can like eat it I cold because it's still it. so good. Like yeah, either way, like I yeah. just cooked it. It's still juicy. It still maintains all its flavor. Like she said, only really a little bit of salt and, and pepper is all we really eat. I can tell you too. Like it doesn't matter if we cook it on the flat top. If I put it in the oven. If I throw it in the slow cooker. If I cook it on the stove. Like it doesn't matter how I cook it. It tastes good. Yeah. And it tastes good when I reheat it. Right. You know, the next day to eat it yeah. too. So. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the important thing. For a lot of people that are really busy, trying to cook every day during the week. It's too it's, much. It's just, that's how you fail. So this is yeah. a way to kind of build in the discipline for the week, yep. knock it all out. It probably takes you, what, an hour to do all this? Yep. Mm, yeah. Maybe. Including cleanup. Yep. Right. Including cleanup. Cut the packaging, cook everything, flip it, take it inside, put it in containers. Yeah. So I just encourage everyone that when you cook, don't cook for just that meal. Cook for the next, you know. Definitely. Four meals, that's ten right. meals, whatever you feel. But yeah. that's a way that you can not have the burden of all the cooking and eat a sustainable, healthy, cooked-at-home lifestyle. That's right. Definitely. Boom. Uh. (laughs) Oh, this is one I just had to throw in there because I know we have (laughs) a lot of bacon fans. We got some amazing, amazing bacon. I think this 
probably got a million comments, but I, I just wanted to hear kind of your guys' thoughts on bacon. <laughs> I looked in the <laughs> in the the manager in the back of the page the other day, and this is the most engaged yeah. post we've had. I think bacon. it had 50 <laughs> comments just about you know how much people love it, which mm-hmm. one's their favorite, the thick slice versus the regular slice. Like you know, people couldn't I'm decide. I'm team lighties. Okay. All right. I like Cheshire for all the cuts of pork, but mm-hmm. when it comes to my bacon, lighties it is. I think lighties edges it out, but. Yeah. A lot of people feel the other way. The Cheshire yeah. is more of an authentic bacon. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's slightly gamier. You okay. Know, you I get like more that. that natural fat flavor. But, right. you know, lighties, they, That's your the hardwood smoke they have on that is just, mm. I don't oh know. My gosh. Love the it. flavor is delicious. Yeah. So whether you like thick cut or you like the traditional cut or, you know. But at the end of it, it's still Whichever bacon. you prefer. Oh, it's yeah. It's going to be amazing. I'm splitting hairs. It's but still, yeah. You can have a preference, but it, either way, like if it's in front of me and it's bacon, hey, you don't it. you don't have to choose. You can have both on your reorder. That's right. right. You can have both. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. yeah. Sample it all. Yeah. <laughs> all right. On to the next one. What do we got here? All right. So this is Ellie again. And she did, I think, four ounce chicken cutlets and Heartland green beans. And I think she threw some potatoes in there. But this is kind of similar to what we were just talking about. It looks like she just threw it in the oven. Made a huge pan of it. There was probably leftovers. She has some sort of like crusting, or I, I think she's called it like a schnitzel. Mm, she yeah. made that she schnitzeled the chicken, but it's got like some capers on there, some mm. fresh parsley and some Love lemon. Capers. <laughs> so good. Looks amazing. A nice little saltiness to it. Looks amazing. Mm. Mm. Never disappointed with Ellie's posts. Well done. Yep. <sighs> yeah, I had to put that one in there. And I, I, I can't remember who posted this. Okay, it was Abdil, Abdil Acosta. He's the one who posted it. But yeah, it looks awesome. Like, wow. Yeah, I mean, the layers of flavor there. <laughs> and that's all turkey, right? Yeah, so you got that's turkey, turkey bacon, bacon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Turkey burgers, avocado, sauteed onions, and peppers. And then he just topped it off with the fried egg. Oh. Like, you got <laughs> everything in there. Yep. It looks amazing. And it uh, looks like it's on some sort of like brioche or like a pretzel bun. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, oh my goodness. Pretzel bread. Yeah. If it's pretzel bread, then <laughs> I'm done. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Maybe the English muffin. That would be good too. Yeah. English muffin would be good too. Yep. I can just. I love when adding an egg to, to anything to any of those, oh, <laughs> like to a sandwich. It's just mm-hmm. like you got to do it. Yep. Just once a week on those bread products, you just upset your gut, buddies. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. So this is Jill Kyle. She posted this. She said it's two pork shoulders, one pork belly, and a rack of the wild boar ribs. Yeah, Jill wow. and Larry don't mess around. That <laughs> is, <laughs> that's no joke. Yeah, it's all got the temp gauges in there. As I say she's obviously and monitoring everything, oh, yeah. probably via phone or some Bluetooth or some sort of app. I know that stuff gets really high tech nowadays. I oh, definitely yeah. needed like a cool thermometer. And then, uh, yeah, she's got the wild boar ribs, which I've just heard such good things about, like mm. in terms of the flavor. And y- I've never seen those anywhere. Like I don't think that's a like common thing. Like out of the grocery store or anything. Yeah, yeah, you can't. It's no it's really interesting. <laughs> the uh, I listened to a whole podcast about feral hogs Interesting. and the situation in Texas. Mm-hmm. They they're overrun, mm. um, so basically ranchers will let anybody you know come in, hunt them. Mm-hmm. And what's pretty crazy about it is they eat acorns or roots and all the stuff. And apparently, the a feral hog is going to taste drastically different depending on where it came from, where it was foraging on, what it came across, because they eat everything. Right, a pig, a pig will literally eat anything, any of it. Yeah, and yeah. you think about the wild boars; those things, whoosh, that's no crazy. Joke. They're they're pretty angry little, <laughs> kind of not scary. even little guys. I'm going to say little guys, Probably but they're, taste they're pretty big. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I heard I heard an interesting story. Um, and this comes back to human animal handling, and we talk about this. Yeah, but he had a, a trap set for something else, and a hog got caught in it. Oh my gosh. And when he came back to the trap. The, the hog was just tired. It had been fighting. It, you could tell it was under extreme stress, and, and he, he put it down, and they went um, har- harvested and butchered the the, the pig, and mm-hmm. and he said it was basically inedible, wow. and it tasted horrendous, and, and it was because really the amount of stress yeah. wow. that that animal was under for that last, you know, six hours of its life or mm-hmm. whatever it was. Wow. So, yeah, even in the wild, like, you know, clean – non-painful it matters to what it's going to taste like yep you know the product so 
Yeah, human animal handling is just so important. Absolutely. Even in the wild. Yep. Wow. All right. Is that the end of our that's, of our selections? That's the for end today? of our list. I mean, we, I feel like we could literally keep going all day long, but we have so many amazing food photos, posts. Thank you to everyone who posts your recommendations and your recipes. We'd love to see more of them, and of course, feature them on a podcast. And uh, as as we're growing the group, it. like I like you said, encourage people to just keep posting. Like eat whatever you're eating for dinner, like don't be shy. Just put it out there, and like you know, let's let's all just share it and. It inspires people, you know, like Shannon was saying, like we saw the the potatoes being paired with a bunch of things. So we went out and we're like, hey, let's we're hungry for potatoes. Let's go <laughs> ahead and let's throw in throw them into the meal. So I think it's super important. It's super great that, you know, people are, are sharing and let's just keep it up. I mean, we're we're close to almost 2000 members. Yeah, let's. If, if you're if you're just tuning in, we did mention at the beginning of the podcast, and there is a post in the foodie group as well as on the Heartland page, we're going to do a 5K member giveaway for the foodie group. So when we reach 5,000 members, we're going to give $2,000 worth of Heartland's Farm Source products away to Whoa. one lucky winner. So you need to invite five friends to the group and post. I've invited my five friends in the comments of the post that's tagged to the top of the foodie group for a chance to win. Yep. You don't have to be, you know, Heartland customer to be in the group. So nope. right. feel free to invite whoever. Yep. It should just be a happy, fun community. And we're just going to keep pumping out good education, good content, and, yep. you know, just keep fulfilling our mission to make the world a healthier place. That's right. Definitely. All right. Well, Heartland family, I think that kind of wraps it up for today. And we'll see you next week. Justin, if you want to send us off. We'll do it again next week, like you said. And as always, stay healthy with Heartland. Heartland.